My name is Tom Lee. I'm an electrical engineer with a Bachelor of Science degree in electrical engineering from the NYU Polytechnic and graduate studies in electrophysics at the University of Southern California. I have 43 years of experience in the research, design, development, and repair of communications, electronics, satellite electronics, radar systems, antennas, electronic measurement instrumentation, information technology, and audio and video technology. Ozone layer of the earth regeneration and more. Ozone can be manufactured by high voltage arcing in the air. I have done this myself. I have an audio tweeter speaker that is called an Ionovac tweeter speaker. The uh, sounds are generated by applying the audio to the player played to the speaker. Inside the Ionovac speaker, there is a high voltage source that constantly generates a high voltage arc between two metal electrodes. The Ionovac speaker generates the sound by using the audio signal applied to the speaker to modulate the high voltage arcing amplitude levels and the various frequency content applied to it. This combination causes a sound to be produced. After a short period of time of use of the Ionovac tweeter, the room fills up with the smell of ozone. This is how high voltage arcing creates ozone from the oxygen in the air in order to make ozone in a much larger quantities to replenish the ozone in the atmosphere. We need to very high, large, high voltage arcing source. This arcing source is supplied by nature in the form of lightning. You will notice that after a big thunder and lightning storm, you can smell the increased ozone in the air as you walk around the wet streets. The certain, the creation of ozone from the air by using lightning generates superheated ozone. The superheated ozone rises to higher altitudes as proven from the principle of hot air rises. The superheated ozone created by the lightning rises into the jet stream and other winds and is carried throughout the world. When the ozone is cooled sufficiently, most of it falls back to the lower levels in the atmosphere. The normal distribution of the ozone in the atmosphere follows this pattern. Since this process is continuous, there will always be a layer of ozone in the air at the various altitudes. What is microwave hearing or RF hearing? Another technical phenomenon that has puzzled people is the topic called microwave hearing or RF hearing. People have said they have heard simple sounds such as ticks or pops as in their ears into full normal sounding voices when they are hit by modulated RF microwave or RF signals. For the balance of this presentation, when I say microwave or RF, I will refer to it as RF. It is really a misnomer because the human ears cannot hear RF signals. It, has, it was named RF hearing because the earliest cases of this phenomenon came from military RF radar technicians that heard ticks or pops when they stepped in front of a radar system antenna while it was on. Military radar systems used pulsed RF radar signals to make the radar transmitters more efficient. Most people thought that this was pulsed RF radar generated the ticks and pops directly from the pulsing RF signal. It is not from the pulsing RF aspects of the radar signal. The human ear can hear mechanical vibrations and electrical audio signals from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. In order for people to hear ticks or pops and other electrical audio signals in the range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz from RF radar signals, the RF radar signals have to be demodulated so the electrical sound can be retrieved and heard in the ears. This is done by using the electronic concept called RF phase demodulation directly in the biological resistance of the inner ear. This is accomplished by transmitting two identical audio modulated RF radar signals with one of the audio modulated RF radar signals, RF phase shifted by 180 degrees with respect to the other modulated RF radar signal. When both audio modulated RF radar signals hit the biological resistance of the inner ear, the RF portion of the signal cancels out due to the 180 degree RF phase shift. This leaves the electrical audio modulation signal in the inner ear and is heard. In the above example of radar technicians, they used a single transmitted RF radar signal. 
RF hearing happens when a single transmitted RF radar signal hits a fixed in position near by random object and bounces off of it and the signal reflects back to the radar technician and hits him here this is called a reflected RF radar signal this reflected RF radar signal is not from the distant object that the radar is trying to locate it is just a fixed in position nearby random object such as a big rock or a building at the same time another RF radar signal is transmitted this is called the incident RF radar signal this incident RF radar signal hits the radar technician's body at the same time as the reflected RF radar si signal hits the radar technician but in this case the total RF phase shift between the reflected RF radar signal and the incident RF radar signal has to be 180 degrees out of phase with respect to each other both the reflected and incident RF radar signals hit the biological resistance of the inner air of the an audio cortex of the RF radar technician. Then, as mentioned before, the reflected RF signal and the incident RF radar signal cancels out due to the 180-degree RF phase shift, and the electrical audio modulation signal is left on the biological resistance of the inner ear and is heard. With the radar antenna constantly scanning around and around or back and forth, and, and all else being the same, every time the antenna passes the radar technician's set, Bo uh, body, a sound will be he heard in the ears as ticks or pops. An equivalent example of generating ticks or pops sound can be de demonstrated by t turning the tuning dial on an AM ra broadcast radio receiver very fast through the stations. When the ra radio station is t turned on, you will hear the station's sound like ticks or pops as you uh, quickly pass tune past them. This is the same as the radar antenna scanning past the radar technician's head and demodulating both the reflected and incident 180-degree out-of-phase RF radar signals on the biological resistance of the radar technician's head. The ticks and pops will be heard. The problem with this method of RF hearing is that it uses one transmitted RF radar signal and depends on the exact location of the reflected RF radar signal that to hit the radar technician exactly at the same time that the incident RF radar signal hits the radar technician on the head and they have exactly 180 degree RF phase shift between the incident and reflected RF radar signals. The needed 180 degree RF phase shift between the reflected and incident RF radar signals and the position of the reflected RF radar signal cannot be easily controlled. It is hard to maintain a 180 degree RF phase shift between the incident RF radar signal and the reflected RF radar signal and the position of the reflected RF radar signal that is that in such situation it can be called one of those once in a lifetime occurrences most of the most people never hear it because of the random randomness of the signals in the existing environment this is why when people use a single tone or a voice modulated RF radar signal in hopes of hearing the ticks or pops or voices, it may be heard if you are fortunate, but it becomes impossible to repeat if, it, if there is any change in the environmental and the signals used. Most, if not almost all, people will think that the first method of generating RF hearing does not work, and the, the person that heard it once is a schizophrenic person. To make it happen on demand, so you can hear it at any time for as long as you want, you have to transmit two RF radar signals at the same time on, or on our separate RF radar systems, and phase shift one of the RF radar signals 180 degrees with respect to the other RF radar signal. When both radar signals hit the radar technician's biological resistance of the inner ear, both RF radar signals phase demodulate and the electrical audio signal is heard. You will hear the same ticks and pops if done in this aforementioned manner. You will always hear it regardless of the timing of the environment. If you modulate the RF radar signal with a human voice, you will hear a human voice. Combine the technology with a regular radar system or a bi-static or multi-static radar system and put it in a satellite and you can make a tracking spy satellite system that can pick up 
the vibrations of person's vocal cords or the reflected radar signal and you will hear the conversation and track the person. If you increase the RF power levels and use other sonic and subsonic modulation signals, a satellite-based electronic biological killing weapon can be made by phase demodulating the two radar signals off the body of the targeted victim and hit the victim with a, the needed so subsonic and sonic modulation that can disrupt the operation of the vital human body organs. This has been done already by the United States government. This kind of satellite has been fully deployed since approximately 1978. Later versions of these satellites made for the U.S. Star Wars program and the Defense Initiative program made use of the electronic biological weapons capability from the, this kind of satellite system. I am being used on these spy and electronic biological weapon systems by the United States government and its operatives. Please see my YouTube posting entitled Microwave Hearing or RF Hearing, a presentation dated March 17, 2013, and my YouTube posting entitled Microwave Hearing or RF Hearing Measured Signals, dated June 27, 2014, for more information on this subject. Thank you very much. For those who are interested, I have taken the liberty of posting the transcript of the prior video presentation. Please use the YouTube pause control to allow you to read it at your convenience. Thank you very much.